What you are listening to is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in the squared circle. Both parties have agreed to dismiss their cases and have their disputes settled here in our forum, The Turnbuckle Debate. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Turnbuckle Debate. My name is Sneed. I'm Chad. And I am Ace, live from the No Cell Studios. I'm not going to be guilty of any copyright infringement today, so I'm just the ace of the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us today, we have digital media specialist Marie Shadows. We're excited to have you here. How are you doing? I am great. That was the most amazing intro. Uh, not, not only for myself, but like the intro of the show. That was fucking amazing. <laughs> I, I loved it. Well, thank, thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for being on. Uh, you, you've got your hands in a lot of pots, Marie. You, you've you've worked with WWE in the past. You're doing covering some New Japan, doing a lot of stuff. What, tell us about what you have going on and where we can find you to follow along. All right, so I am Marie Shadows. I'm known as the professor of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I dub myself the New Japan Queen because I love everything New Japan Pro Wrestling. So if you want to get more info on New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, from me and others, uh, head over to marieshadows.substack.com. Now, in addition to all of that, I'm also a freelance podcaster for Goddesses of War Wrestling, which is a sister company and an all-women's promotion to Titan Championship Wrestling. So I have all of that, plus writing and live streaming and everything else, too. That's awesome. A lot of busy. Staying busy. <laughs> yeah, staying hey, busy. You, you got to make your I mark in this war, in the podcasting, wrestling, being covering pro wrestling. You got to, you got to be busy. Well, we're glad to have you. We have three new topics to debate. We'll go about 10 to 15 minutes on each topic. Uh, Tom's not here tonight, so we don't have to shut him up. So <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good to go. If you guys are ready, we can get into the first topic. Let's do it. All, All right, right, let's go. Let's do it. First topic of the evening. Will House of Black return to AEW in 2023? Now, there's been a, I mean, there's been so much around this. Um, there's been news come out. Malachi's come out and said a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot of meat to this. Yeah. So. I mean, he waved, supposedly waved goodbye at all out. Yeah. Uh, people thought he asked for his release. And possibly it was granted. And then Buddy Matthews just this past week supposedly takes time away. All the rumors are going. And then Malachi comes out and says he will be back at some point. So there's a lot of meat on the bone. Uh, what one of you guys take it? What do you think about this? Um, I'll start. I'll start here okay. first, Maria. I apologize. I didn't want okay. to cut you no off. No worries. No worries. The biggest thing here is that it's ever flowing. And I think the, the dispute here and the feud I want to see in the ring would be House of Black versus the Dirt Sheets because it feels like Malachi has just had it up to here with specifically Sean Ross Sapp. Like it feels like he didn't name him by name, but he is going after him. And Sean Ross Sapp is doing the same on his end. Now, the question at hand here, 2023, will we see House of Black? Initially, you would have asked me 24 hours ago. I probably would have said no. Now I'm feeling it's a point of pride where they're going to be back because he had said, and he, you know, his word is bond. He said, this is a temporary hiatus. We are only recalibrating and we're going to be back better than ever. So I'm going to say yes. Wishful thinking. I'm a huge House of Black fan. I love the presentation. I think so much more could have been done in the following, you know, in the following stint that they have here. I hope it's much better, much bigger and main event bound because what they did for them being on TV once every four weeks didn't do it for me. I need them to be in the main event. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, my answer is going to be more towards like before Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews decided to put out their word because, yeah, I do agree that like, you know, the dirt sheets take it from zero to 100, including the fans, because it's always like, oh, I heard it through the grapevine and it's the worst game of telephone on the wrestling community. <laughs> but um, yeah, like even if Malachi before all that said his piece, if he felt that he had a better chance to be happier to maybe, you know, allow his project that he loves so much to grow really great. 
Um, I wouldn't have been mad if he decided to go back to WWE and be like, hey, Tony, look, um, I've come to this uh, decision by like re reflecting and being like, hey, I don't think this is a good fit anymore because we're not getting enough like TV time or whatever. And I don't want to see House of Black revert to like an AEW dark or like an Evelation or like a Rampage because it makes no sense. Like that should be like the really top like horror-esque type of like heel faction on like a main show to push those ratings to push sales or whatever but in like the bigger picture if he felt like he was going to be happier back in wwe you know i would have been like you know you could go back it's totally fine you know it's his decision it's his mental health health and how he has to uh try to juggle everything you know i wouldn't mind if he went back triple h would welcome him with open arms yeah i i think there's like two there's two ways of looking at it. there's I always side with the wrestlers, like what they want to do, their happiness, making the most money is always like, I, I, I kind of always side with them, but at the same time, like just to play devil's advocate, I think he should have been able to go where he wanted to, but from a business yeah. side, being a young company, Tony Khan was put in a pretty tough spot in this situation where it's like, if you cave under pressure to a talent, just saying, Hey, I'm not happy. Let me go there's been leadership questions around Tony Khan already. If you cave and just let someone kind of stonewall you into a release, I think that sets a bad precedent for Tony Khan this early on where you're going to get people doing that a lot more. It, it sets a bad precedent. Um, do I think they will be back in AEW? I think a lot of this has gotten blown out of proportion. I think the initial him, We've known that Malachi, I, I don't know if we really knew, knew I, there were murmurings of, of it, but supposedly he was dealing with some serious injuries. That's why they, they weren't pushing them as, as big as, as what we all feel they should have been pushed. Cause I think Malachi could be the undertaker of AEW if pushed correctly. He, he could be that guy for them, but I, I do think they will be back in AEW in 2023. And I think there's a good possibility they come back at full gear. There was a full gear ad that came up and it had all three of the house of black members featured in it. And it said new champions will rise and this, that, and the other new stories will begin. Um, and they featured them very heavily. Like there was a shot of just them in the Newark, Newark, New Jersey ad that they put out. And I'm wondering like, is this a way for Tony Khan to kind of spin all the negativity? These guys aren't happy. They want it out. Uh, the dirt sheets think they know what's going on behind the scenes. And then all of a sudden they come back repackaged a month and a half later at the next pay-per-view in a big way. I think that would be a very smart way for Tony Khan to kind of let the fit, the IWC know, like you think you know what's going on, but you don't. Yeah, and I agree. That was going to be my point. What I think, I think it has gotten blown way out of proportion. I think, you know, asking for a release, I don't think was what he did. I think he asked for time away. Mm -hmm. And I think that it just got blown up into asking for a release when I don't think that's ever what the case was. You know, the, the word recalibration had been used a lot. And I think that's initially what it was going to be. And I don't, I think they will be back in 2023. And I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be long. I think they needed just a little bit of time away. He needed to take care of some stuff, maybe even just needed a break. And then mm -hmm. they're going to just regroup. And I think they see the merit in what House of Black offers to the company. So I would hope so. To, I mean, so, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know how you couldn't see <laughs> the merit that they <laughs> offer. And with everything that's going on, and, and recalibration is something that's been used a lot in this company recently. There's been a lot of, uh, you, they've had to do a lot of recalibration. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they took that, I, I, that time away to do the recalibration. And I, I think they will be back in early 2023. I don't think they're going to spend a lot of time away. I'm thinking about what you guys were saying about, potentially, uh, you know, Chad making the argument that it's a business. And of course it is. And Marie, you making the argument that let the talent go where they want to go. Mm -hmm. This is Tony's chance to break from the mold. 
And I understand that, you know, he was very critical of FTR being locked up and all the talent that was being hoarded in WWE prior to AEW even starting up. He was very vocal about saying that that's not how it should be done. He wants to be talent driven. He wants to be someone who's a wrestler first promoter. This is sort of putting his flag in the ground saying he's just more of the same. He wants to do right by his business. But at the same time, if Malachi came to him and said, I don't want to be here. I think my vision fits better in WWE. I agree. I, if, if I'm Tony Khan, I'm not letting him go. But Tony Khan, everything he's been saying as far as being a wrestler t- first promoter was saying he would let a guy like that go if he wasn't happy because it's about the betterment of the wrestling business, not just AEW as a singular entity. It needs to be thought of. We would get better Malachi Black, better matches, better character development elsewhere. Yeah. So as a wrestling fan, I'd rather see it if, if you're Tony Khan. But I understand why he's changing his tune. I think he's kind of seeing you can't live in this utopia of just yeah. everyone's being mm-hmm. happy. I think what we're seeing here is all this, you know, the flowers and bubbles and everything that was going on at AEW the first couple of years. Honeymoon is over. Yeah. When you yeah. get all of these personalities in the same room, as we saw in WCW, you have a lot of great talent, but with great talent comes personalities that will clash. Mm-hmm. Egos will get on top of each other and you have to be able to manage it. And I think Tony, that's something he really needs to work on in the coming years. I wouldn't be surprised if they, if Malachi had came to Tony and said, I'm not happy. And maybe even did ask for his release and said that he sees a better vision somewhere else. And for Tony to go, okay, well, let's take a step back. Let's take some time away to do this recalibration and let me hear what your vision is. And let's work around. That's that. what I was going to, that's where I thought you were going ACE when you were like, break the mold. It's like, we live in this world where we think it's either, okay, the talent's unhappy, let them go or, or stonewall them and keep them locked to a contract. There's a third option. If the talent's unhappy and think they can be used better in WWE, what if like you're saying, Sneed, Tony did sit down and be like, Hey, let's let the dust settle. Let's take a break. Let the fans miss you. But what's the, what is the creative you see for yourself? That's that third option that no one's talking about. The other thing too, if you think about it, the three people that are unhappy with their booking, of course their booking sucks. Like Andrade, (laughs) Miro, uh, House yeah. of Black with with all uh, Zelina is the spouse mm-hmm. of Malachi, and you also have Rhea's dating buddy, and Andrade is married to Charlotte. So part of being happy is being able to work with the people around you. Adam Cole, part of the allure of coming to AEW is the fact that Britt Baker is here. So right. that has to be considered as well. And of course, we're not trying to dive deep in these guys' personal lives and why they make their decisions, yeah. but at the same time, that's got to play a part. You have to think about that. Well. I can work and be on the road with my wife or my significant other. It's got to be something that plays a huge part in it. Definitely. That's like 100% like true, you know, especially like in the wrestling business. It's one of the most like hardest business, loneliest business and like accidents can happen and stuff. And sometimes, you know, even people go through the grind and, you know, when they get home to their family, it's like, you know, they get reminded why they do it. So, you know, sometimes if they're like away from them, like, you know, we have certain wrestlers in AEW and then like their spouses are like in WWE, like it can have a toll on them because they're not always there with them at the time that they go home. Uh, Cause you know, uh, their significant other and like WWE is always on the road. So yeah, you know, um, that that's definitely like a, a vital factor in like deciding whether you want to stay or like, you know, go somewhere else. Yeah. And if he's creatively fulfilled, I'm sure he can look past and be like, you know what? I'm doing the yeah. best work I could possibly do this house of black stuff. I'm feeling like this is exactly what I saw in my vision, but you pair that with there being book like shit. I think we can all admit that that's they're, the not big, being, yeah. they're not yeah. being presented in the way that he had envisioned. I don't want to speak for Malachi, but at the same time, we all can see the writing on the wall. This was supposed to be a main event level presentation and Malachi they're secondary and that never should be the case. This house of black thing has legs to be the biggest thing in wrestling. And right now, like you said, Marie, it's, it's on rampage. It's on dark. It's, you know, Julie Hart hasn't even been on, on dynamite. She's been on rampage and dark. Like that should have never happened. Right. Like, that's yeah. a piece to House of Black that we don't even think about is Julia Hart and what she can offer to They it. became a Rampage brand. Like yeah. they were like yeah. the team that always popped up on Rampage. I'm like, man, this is your main event. Like the fact that they haven't, I get that they, they've had a lot of stuff told in the main event scene, but how do you not see Malachi as a world title threat? I'm not saying put the belt on him, but that's a viable, uh, 
top tier main event story is the house of black kind of wreaking havoc on a champion uh, uh, to me yeah. it it's itself yeah it's fresh too like it hasn't been done in AEW at all we've just had match and guys that are going after each other for yeah. the titles and being the best technical wrestler or the you know john moxley being the toughest guy in the room we haven't really had that type of allure in a feud where there's mind games there's all that for the title it yeah. hasn't been that way i mean we saw a little bit with jericho and moxley but it's mostly been just wrestling driven. There hasn't been that extra allure of the storyline that house of black could have provided. Right. Yeah. So let's, totally before, we, before we move on, yes or no, we'll go around the horn. Are they going to be back in 2023? Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't think they set. I, I, I don't no. think they're the type to set. And I, I think, you, just real quick before we move on the, how you talked about the recalibration Sneed, like, that's the thing we forget is that is that's a vital element of just pro wrestling in general yeah. for decades of guys taking time and not to say that we got him shoved down our throat because we all think the house of black wasn't used enough but sometimes it is nice to kind of miss someone yeah i mean you we're seeing it right now in our final topic we'll get into it but bray wyatt i think the fervor behind the possibilities of this bray wyatt white rabbit thing is because we haven't seen him. We miss him. And hopefully they, they take that recalibration and, and the fans miss them and they deliver something that's worthy of his return. hundred percent. All right. If you guys, any final thoughts, we'll move on to our next topic. Let's Let's do it. It. All right. We're good. Next topic of the evening. <laughs> Will Hikaleya turn on Tama Tonga come October 10th? When Tama faces Jay White for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Now, Marie, this is your topic, so I'll defer to you first to go on this. Um, I am going to say no, only because, uh, uh, what was it? Like the day before yesterday, I did uh, some research with my community and watched some New Japan Strong. And after that promo that... Um, Jay White gave to like Hikaleo indirectly, but directly. Um, I was just like, yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that Hikaleo is not going to turn on Tama come October 10th. And we may be seeing a new IWGP world highway champion too. Really? Wow. That's a, that's a bold statement. I like yeah, it. Man. I, I'm going with you. I don't think he's going to turn because, and I want to get kind of take the temperature of the room on this, but, when I saw that he turned to join Tama, uh -huh. there's there's a little shades of bloodline here. Exactly. It was like it, it's, all, a family, yeah. it's a family, it's a family affair. Is. They're joining to turn against the Bullet Club. Um, I wonder, do you think that New Japan is seeing you know the Samoan dynasty happening in Stamford, Connecticut, and they're like, hey, we got a little bit of that here. Let's take that, and now you're going to have. Tama Tonga, Hikaleo going against it's faction warfare. That's right. that's a yeah. perfect storyline. And they the still bullet. have your brother to come back too, right? That's out injured right Loa. now. Loa. Yeah, Loa's still out with uh with a knee injury. Uh he's doing good though in recovery. You know, with the Bullet Club, this has been a thread throughout New Japan for the longest time, as we all know. We've seen people come and go, but the Bullet Club brand has been throughout it. I mean, Hikaleo joined the Bullet Club back in 2017. And this story has been growing. Like we have two mm -hmm. feuding mindsets where they want to go out and do their own thing. You Tama, you know, is a classic tag team wrestler trying to break from that mold and challenge for the world title. And correct me if I'm wrong, Marie, this is the first time he's challenging for a world title in his career. Yeah. So this is a huge <laughs> moment for him. Now that massive. he has Hikaleo at his side, yeah. it's, it's massive. But you know, the other thing, the layer of this is Tom has already showed he can beat Jay White. He beat him in the G1 yeah. climax. So he's already had that win over him. So that story's layered there. But the reason why I don't think Hikaleo is turning on him is for two things. Gato doesn't book like the American bookers. This is not the standard yeah, WWE. True. He's not going to go with throwing hints. I think once they kind of did what they did back in the 25th, where Hikaleo sided with Tama and yeah. choke slammed uh, Jay White and showed his true colors, he wants to take a side with his family. He made his intentions that he wants to go after the never open weight championship. So once the, once new Japan puts like those things in motion, they very rarely go off that beaten path. So they could be doing a red heron here and they want you to think that Tama and Hikaleo have some beef going on. I don't see it happening. I really don't. I think it's going to be Jay white versus Tama, but 
But I think ultimately Wrestle Kingdom is going to be Jay White versus o Okada. I think that's where we're going. I don't think it's going to be Tama, but we'll see. I mean, I would I would sign up for that, Maria. I think that would be an amazing storyline that would be unpredictable, but Gato doesn't really give us the unpredictability. <laughs> Well, I mean, in this one, um, Okada still wants to do some stuff with that trophy. So right. he's still in this uh, weird story. Not really weird story. He's in this uh, fight with um, Jonah because Jonah beat him uh, in the G1. Like has a win over him, which is kind of like ironic. Not No, I'm sorry. Wrong word. Iconic yeah. uh, to have a win over Okada. It's, it's iconic for that. Of course. Uh, but I think, I think Okada still wants to do more stuff with the G1 trophy for it to mean more. I don't think we're... I, Man, I really hope we don't get like an Okada versus Jay White thing. I really need like this whole chase of Tama versus Jay because that's where the money is. Because Tama is such a huge baby face that now he's going after his single world title shot. And then Okada has everything. <laughs> like yeah. Okada doesn't need any more like for this year or for like two years. You know, he has everything. Uh, we always talk about Okada anyway. We don't talk enough about um, you know, Tama, Hikaleo, Loa. We don't talk enough about those guys, but now we are. Um, the other thing too is that, like, you know, obviously family, family is always gonna be there, but um Hikaleo never attacked Tama or Loa whenever he was with Jay White. And Jay White always pulled him away from them and still trying to make it seem like, oh no, it's just business, it's not personal. So, you know, he gave Hikaleo a choice. But then after a while, like that that promo on New Japan Strong, after after the fact when they had that little tension, yeah, I was just like, yeah, he's done. He's he's <laughs> done. He's going over. The the thing that's concerning for that is Jay White's only defended the title once, and it was at Forbidden Door. He hasn't defended it. So for him to lose it on a second defense, again, could happen because it's been since June. It hasn't just because the, the frequency of shows hasn't been as much. And obviously they're focused on the G1 throughout the summer. So it's not so much about the championship. That's why I'm like, I don't think Jay White's losing on a second defense but, against Tom. I Again, I would sign up for it. I would love it. That'd be amazing. But I think that's to what Marie's talking about. I don't think he necessarily has to win the first time they go, they face each other. That's the chase. Yes. Yeah. Jay, Jay gets that first win. The chase still continues. You have such a built-in storyline with these two kind of groups going against each other because yeah. correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Tom, uh, won the never open weight championship yeah. and lost it to Carl Anderson, who's a bullet club member. So there's, so there's a lot of stuff going on built into this. And I'm, I agree. I don't really want to Okada. I mean, he's done it all. Like we don't yeah. need to see him and Jay white right now. Like, I feel like, like you said, Marie, this is, this is the money making storyline that if you really get behind it and push it, I think you could do a couple matches out of this. Uh, I do want to like say one more comment too, because Ace had brought up um, that you know he you don't see Jay White losing the belt after having like one defense, and you know as much as I love Jay because I'm wearing one of his like t-shirts, <laughs> as, as, as much as much as I love Jay and I sing his praises like all the time. When he had the never openweight championship title, he didn't really defend it that much either. And then like it got dropped to Ishii, and then like you know it went through the whole stages. So like Jay, I love you if you ever listen to this, but um <laughs> Jay. Jay doesn't hold on to championship titles as long as he should. So like, again, come October, we could have a new champion. I'd be here for it. And I think it's a cool <laughs> moment because this would be the first time Wrestle Kingdom has been in front of fans that can make noise. So it would be yes. cool for Tama to enter that as champion and have whoever he wants it. Maybe it'd be a Jay White rematch or Jay White comes in as champ and faces Tama for the title. Yeah. To have that organic reaction. Of course, people are going to react crazy to okada they're going to want to see him and they're yeah. going to react very loudly but the emotional investment people have in a family driven story as we're seeing on smackdown with the Sami Zayn stuff and jay and jay and jimmy uso and roman reigns it has oh like this God. extra level of i don't know it makes people react a certain way and i think with tama and hikaleo it could be an emotional moment for him win the title with his family in his corner yeah so yeah. go ahead sneed i was gonna say no i don't i, I don't first i don't think that he's gonna turn on, I don't think he's going to turn, but do you think that this blood is thicker than water, uh, family versus bullet club? Do you think it kills it if Jay wins on October 10th or can they continue that? They can still continue. Uh, I see like just right off the top of my head, nothing stops it from like continuing. Uh, because if it did, that means that like, even before all of this, it would have, it would have stopped already. Um, you know, it probably would have stopped when like 
Tama got the victory over Jay, but it's going to continue no matter what. It's going to continue to like Wrestle Kingdom and like we'll be surprised there if it goes, you know, the other way around. So, so if, if Hikaleo stays with him, like we all, it sounds like all of us think he's not going to turn on Tama. What's next for him? I mean, we, we, we've talked up Tama so much, possibly winning that belt off of Jay. But what's next for, I mean, this, this is a young guy. He yeah. looks like a monster. I mean, they could do it. And we all know like new Japan loves their monsters. Look how they handled Lance Archer. Yeah. Um, I think Jonah could be one of those, you know, a classic new Japan monster, but what's next for Hikaleo? Like, what do you guys think? What do you see for him? If this storyline continues with bullet club and those guys, uh, I mean, AC want to take it. Yeah. I think the easy option is taking the never open weight title off of Carl Anderson and he just rolls in for and has a great run and you have him winning that title. I think again, Gato does never, he doesn't, doesn't tease things without paying them off. So he's going to, if he's showing his hand saying they're teasing from going for that championship, chances are he's going for it. whether he wins it or not, that's up for debate, but he's going to be challenging Carl Anderson in the near future, whether it's at declaration of power or somewhere else, it's going to be happening soon. Um, and then after all that, if nothing goes their way and once Loa comes back 100%, they could go after the uh, six man never open weight championship titles because um, that got that that went right back to House of Torture, right. which is like, why? It's not, it's not going <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> that is the uh, hmm. Does that the fact that those titles are out there kind of just ha hanging with those dudes? Do you think it's that's an easy way out for them to not let Tama take that title. Do you think that's, that's kind of a ace up their sleeve where, it's, where are they going to push, push them towards those six man t titles instead of giving the man his moment with the world title? I hope not. We just spoke that out to existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but no, I, I, I wouldn't. Well, go ahead. I just want to ask you a question about your opinion on the impact relationship with new Japan, because in my opinion, although impact doesn't get all the accolades that AEW gets as far as an in-ring product, I think in a lot of yeah. ways, when the new Japan talent goes over to impact in a lot of ways, it helps them develop, especially a guy like Hikaleo. We mentioned how young he mm. is. His time and impact has been essential to his development. I think you see it happen because in New Japan, they weren't allowed to be making noise. And the fact that he spent a lot of time in impact was huge for his development. And I've seen growth immensely in the last couple of months with him. Uh, 100% man. Like, um, th this is what I was always mentioning, whether that's on my podcast with you guys or other people too, that like, you know, when new Japan stars go over to impact, it feels like a big deal. It feels like, you know, you should pay attention to this guy. You should watch this guy. You should grow this, grow with this guy and be like, and understand like why they're so unique. Right. When it, when they go over to AEW, it's sort of like, um, there, it, it feels like, it feels like they, they're, they're just a wrestler off the street. That did that like they 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 just happen to be a wrestler, so they just bring them in. But yeah, um, Impact does very great in uh letting you know who like Hikaleo is and letting you know that you know Chris Bay is still part of the Bullet Club and like everything that he does, and also um Ace Austin part of the Bullet Club. Like they give them their spotlight, their opportunity, and they tell stories in the ring, and they're able to like um evolve in front of that like impact crowd and it feels so much better we're not talking about it because i have like no idea why but like we we could all appreciate it by like how far they all come we're not yeah, we're not talking about it because hd net is what yeah. <laughs> impact is yeah. i yeah, mean yeah you know what i mean like because i i'm with you i think impact uses them so much better and and the the thing they do that aew didn't do outside of like moxley Mm -hmm. They let their guys go to New Japan and actually become a part of their storylines. The fact that you have Chris Bay and Ace Austin brought into the Bullet Club, like, why isn't Sammy Guevara or, you know, like some of these guys yeah. that you're using, like, if they would have allowed them to actually go to Japan and work some of these storylines, yeah. it would have mattered so much more. But it always felt like we were getting New Japan guest spots and right. then they would yeah. go. It never felt like AEW was scratching the back of New Japan like New Japan was scratching AEW's back. Well, that's a good yeah, point, totally. Chad, because mm -hmm. you have the fact that Gato's in Philly tonight. We're filming. It's Wednesday, uh, 928. So right before Dynamite goes on air, Gato and Tony Khan are meeting all day today. So there's a huge 
divide in how I think New Japan was presented in AEW and also Impact. I think it's not a two way street. It felt like AEW was always going over. Look at Forbidden Door. Aside mm-hmm. from that World Heavyweight Championship match, everything else felt like AEW had the upper hand. And I'm not saying it was to the level of they looked weak, but in a lot of ways, you have to be able. That's why I wanted a guy like Tana to win the interim AEW Championship because it would have been the biggest olive branch to a company like New Japan saying it would have no consequence because eventually what we saw happen could have happened. Could have Moxley beat him a next month in pay-per-view and been able to get to where you want to go. But it would have been at least an olive branch towards Gato and say, Hey, we're willing to give you this world championship. Let you hold on to it, go around Japan and tour with it. while right. We're figuring out what to do, but it always feels like AEW got the upper hand. And I think if Gato sitting in the room has to say, what's in it for me? Why should I let mm-hmm. my talent go to you? And, you know, and lose. Cause look at juice Robinson night where we're, we're, we're oh 30 God. minutes from dynamite. Juice is losing to Moxley tonight. So how does that benefit <laughs> uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling? I understand the match is going to be great and they have a history, but it would be huge for New Japan if Juice was to go over Moxley, but that's never going to happen. Yeah. Unless like, you know, they're in New Japan, but uh, breaking news, I don't know if you guys read, which I'm not believing a word Juice <laughs> said in this interview. Uh, Juice uh, Juice claims that he is a free agent and that I he no that. longer carries he no longer carries the uh, New Japan brand like he he's not doing that anymore so he gets to have any type of wrestling match he wants and gets to do whatever he wants but you know the last time that I believe juice <laughs> He ended up in Bullet Club. Right. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, sir, I believed you. What are you doing? <laughs> so, so this is why this time this time around, I'm just like, I don't believe you, man. I still think that you're part of New Japan because then what's the point of you being in Bullet Club? What, what was the point of that? Like, you know, I yeah. love that he's in Bullet Club. I love that he's doing what he's doing. Like, what's the point of telling people, yeah, I don't wave that banner, but I can do whatever I want. Sir, hey, fade man, they're just working the dirt sheets. That's what everyone's doing at this point. We're like, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the next topic. It's like working the internet's the way to get something over. And yeah, and, and Juice Robinson, since he joined Bullet Club, I thought, every, I thought since he left NXT and went to New Japan, he leveled up. But yeah. from, but even joining Bullet Club, he's leveled up even more. Not so much in ring, I think his in ring is always solid. But his his like persona, persona and everything, yeah. His vibe, it, it's like he's finding himself. And I I w- was listening to bu- uh, Busted Open today, and Tommy Dreamer made a wild, outlandish claim. I want to see what you guys think of this. He said that when he sees the new work that Juice is doing, he sees in his character work he sees shades of a young macho man. Wow. And just in oh. auto and the way he carries himself. And yeah, honestly, there's a little bit I can. Obviously, it's almost sacrilegious to, to say anyone is macho man, but I get where he's coming from because he has. He, yeah, he has yeah. this attitude about him now that I've never seen before. He's channeling gonna... something that wasn't that we haven't seen. And with CJ Parker and NXT, they didn't allow him to tap into it. And we saw. With the Finn Juice tag team, that we saw more of that. They were putting on epic matches. Oh, Finn was incredible. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. And then the one-on-one matches with Moxley helped him level up. And I think that's why the story here with Moxley rings true. I mean, I wish the result would be different. I would wish mm-hmm. that some Juice Robinson could go over in some way, maybe have Gato interfere, something to advance the story and have <laughs> right. It makes sense. Um, it's Bullet yeah, Club. Bullet Club tactics. Exactly. <laughs> I, just, I want it on my television. I don't want. New Japan wrestlers, especially Juice Robinson, who's one of my favorites right now going in New Japan Pro Wrestling, to look weaker in comparison. I know he's not the he's not a world title contender in New Japan yet, but if he was to beat someone like Moxley, in even in shady tactics, it would be huge for mm-hmm. the brand and just the yeah. relationship at large. I'm not convinced that that's not going to happen tonight, though. This isn't a title match. I will say this. This is an eliminator it's match. One person that's really good about respecting their opponents and letting them look look as good as they do in their own promotions is Mox. Look at the way they brought in Mance Warner from GCW. He made a glorified deathmatch guy to, to the indie fans look like a viable threat in his yeah. match on Rampage. And... I think Moxley sees the merit in these guys sometimes more so than even Tony Khan sees it. And he's like, Hey, we got to make this guy look good. I think juice is going to, I'm not saying he's going to win or chances are Mox is going to go over, but I think juice is going to look like, look, yeah, he is funny tonight. 
you know, but I, if, I think about listen, Brett Lauderdale, right? Like Brett Lauderdale's relationship with, you know, Tony Khan, it's definitely a one way street. It's just like, all right, we'll send yeah. Moxley to you. And that's about it. We're not going to show the title on AW television. But I also think eventually Moxley's losing that title and you have your best wrestlers taking Moxley to the limit. Why can't that be the same here? And I know you, we all agree Juice is going to take him to the limit and he's going to challenge him and there's that history. But eventually Mox is going to lose in GCW, right? Is it going to be Nick Gage in October? If Nick Gage can beat Moxley, why can't Juice do it in the same, yeah. in the same breath? Right, yeah. right. Well, the difference is one's use, one uses a pizza cutter and the other one doesn't. <laughs> so, you know. True. <laughs> yeah, very true. I'll bring Gato right. out with a pizza cutter. That's all I want. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, imagine. <laughs> Gato, you got to use this pizza cutter. What? Exactly. Okay, okay, just go. That's Red Shoes' is music. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. All right. Does, does anybody have any final thing, any final thoughts on this topic before we move on? You know, it was a fun topic. Thank you for bringing it, Maria. Yeah. yeah we don't, sure. don't get welcome. New Japan. So I, I love that. All right, so we'll move on to the final topic of the evening. Is the White Rabbit a game changer for storytelling in professional wrestling? Now, right now in WWE, we have the White Rabbit. They're dropping clues and hints and QR codes. Is this a game changer for storytelling? Sneak, I'm going to take the lead on this, man. Yeah, Come on. You're going last on all of them. Yeah, so I'd... I'd I think it's fun, but I don't think it's a game changer. Um, I think it's a lot of fun, though. We we kind of know. I, I believe that it's Bray Wyatt that we're going to get back. And I hope that when we do get him back, that he is a game changer for the business. I don't think this story is a game changer, but I hope he is when he does come back. I think it's it started out as a game changer for me. Like I, I like well, I guess I could say it did start out, but as of right now, it's not it, for me. It 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 started out and I was like, oh, this is interesting. I loved how they did the QR code very subtly. I love that everything was kind of built off of social media and just people like reacting to it. Although it was kind of triggered by that first initial drop of the music being played you know, in, in a commercial break was dropped, I believe by Ryan Satin who works for WWE Fox. So, but it, they did it very subtly. He put the cheese out there. Everyone latched onto it. Then the video started to come. Then the QR code. I love the, like the mystery element of it. And that, that is very, very fun. Now, when we all tuned in at nine 23 on nine 23, <laughs> to see what, what it was, that's when, although we got another cool little QR code video and all of this, now I'm starting to feel like you're jerking me along. Now there's just a little bit of me feeling like this is just a way to tune in next week and you're going to keep tuning in next week, which that's the name of the game. We, uh, me, me and Snead always say you want those cliffhangers to get you to tune into the next episode. So I'm being a little contradictory of myself here because because those are what the business is about, getting me to tune back in. But there is a little bit of that Christmas story element of little Ralphie. You posted the video, Ace. Yeah. There's a little bit of that. He, he's got his little, uh, the Dream code. Ovaltine? <laughs> yeah. And he, <laughs> it has this feeling of I'm going to follow this, this puzzle. And then at the end, it's going to be like, oh, it was Bray Wyatt. Eh, you know, like I just, the journey, you can string me along, but if it just ends up being Bray, even though we all think it's Bray and we want it to be Bray in so, a certain sense, it's all in the way it's done. If you're just going to jerk me around for two, three, four weeks, a month or whatever, and then it's just Bray coming back with, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm skeptical right now. I'm very mm -hmm. skeptical. Marie, go ahead. You can go next. All right. Uh, I don't like the phrase game changer because everybody uses it and they use it. They use it the wrong way. So um, what I what I do think is this isn't well, for the sake of this conversation, I'll use game changer. Um, I don't think it's a game changer for wrestling 
because not everyone has the same amount of money that the, the, that WWE has to put towards this marketing. It's a game changer for marketing wise and to show you what you can do to rope in like any kind of fan. It doesn't matter if it's casual or hardcore. We have like detectives 24 seven on Twitter trying to figure this out. So like, you know, sure. WWE is, is teaching everyone else that if you make something so cryptic and cool, uh, people will follow it. People would like do do the detective work for you and stuff. Um, do I want Bray Wyatt to come back? Sure, if he wants to, that'd be great if he comes back. But that's the most obvious uh, choice and answer for him to come back. So you know, I've heard this discussion many times with others, and I've had this discussion. So I came up with something a little bit different. Maybe they might be introducing a new woman's wrestler to be like the new Alice in Wonderland. So we can like start progressing towards maybe at the end, we do get that Bray Wyatt and it is a whole new faction in WWE to, to showcase how they can actually use a faction and stuff like that. So I'm thinking it's going to be like a female first because like a white rabbit, you follow the rabbit down the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland and bam, you get a female um, wrestler like that. But I do think that everybody across the board in wrestling and also in podcasting can take note of how to utilize marketing and like all the social media tools with you, even if you don't have a huge budget like WWE, but you can't imp uh, implement like the smaller steps. So it's a game changer for marketing, basically. So, yeah. No, that that's a great point. Uh I would say, I mean the way we look at this will largely depend on what happens at the end of this. I think about yeah. use game of Thrones as an example. The season finale sucked yeah. the series finale, I should say. And <laughs> for me personally, I look at the whole show it kind of feels ruined because you, everything feels so solid as you get to where it is. And as far as game changer, we've seen things like this in wrestling, whether it be the higher power or the GTV angle or the anonymous GM and all three of those things didn't pay off in a good way because possibly they didn't know where they were going. So I really hope and on their end, they really have a plan about where they're going and it's Bray Wyatt and it winds up being something effective to book him because if we're honest with ourselves, the way the fiend was, was presented at the tail end of it with Alexa bliss and the bugs in the ring and burning down Randy Orton's house. That's yeah. not for me. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I do like the fiend character and its origins where he was turning guys good and bad and just had a different presentation. He was spooky but then when you start getting goofy with all that stuff, that's when you lose me. I'm hoping Triple H can take that blend of realism in his product, what he had with the NXT black and gold, and also with the Fiend's creative juices being churned up and being able to be utilized in its way. It could be perfection, if we're being honest. It could be absolutely amazing, but I'm skeptical. I mean, utilizing the internet mm -hmm. to, to get people to buzz and get people to talk it's tale as old as time. As long as the internet's been created, it's going to be utilized as a vehicle for pro wrestling. We've been seeing it time and time again, whether it's MJF or the CM Punk mm -hmm. stuff or the elite stuff, storylines are being driven, whether they're real shooter or, or work, they're being driven through these channels because that's how people consume their media now. And this is almost like tongue in cheek. This is a way that WWE is kind of like laughing at us. You're appealing to the hardcores, but you know, the casuals are going to really enjoy this when it happens. So it's like almost the perfect blend and we may be giving them too much credit because again, if it winds up being Karen cross or it's edge or it's something to do with judgment day and people are wildly disappointed, this is going to be looked at as wrestle botch and people are going to make fun of it for the end of time. If it's very oh, wide, I hope it's something effective that can get Wyndham out there in its full con. I don't think we've seen the absolute best Bray Wyatt yet. And I'm hoping this brings it out of him. I will say this, the longer you string me along, the 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 bigger the pot better be when it actually happens. Yeah. The payoff the payoff better be worth it. Yeah, you you put you dig yourself in a deeper and deeper hole the longer you string me along. You string sure. me along for a month, a month and a half, and then it turns out to be something with Dominic and Judgment Day and <laughs> yeah, <bullshit. laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be fucking <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, I, I kind of, um, you guys have me backpedaling the game changer phrase too a little bit, because if you remember during the pandemic before in the lead up to the dark orders exalted one, mm -hmm. when you want to talk about doing a, a bringing out the sleuths of the IWC to try and crack a code, they were doing that. They were, it, it was a core, 
Brody Lee, Matt Hardy, and the AEW Twitter feed was pumping out images yeah. with, I remember they would release these images that were seemingly black and you had to take the image, put it into a photo filter and crank the contrast down. And there were encrypted like phrases at the bottom. And all of these people were finding those in these images that you couldn't see with the naked eye. So that was very, very similar to what WWE is doing. They're, they're putting out a puzzle and you're trying to find the pieces. And I love that uh, WWE is doing this. It's, it's fresh for them after the, you know, the decades we've been suffering through Vince McMahon, but yeah, uh, the payoff, man. It's all about that play. No one remembers the journey. They remember how it all ends. It, it's all about yeah. how it ends. And do you cool. think if it is a female, like you said, Marie, if they bring out a female character, do they run the risk of the fans turning on this angle? Because, you know, every, I feel like so many people right now are Bray, Bray, Bray. If it isn't Bray, does it hurt it? Uh, yeah, because fans can be a little selfish and they really want things for themselves. Um, but if it's a female, you know, she could always have like a promo or extra clues to go along to be like, hold on guys, the journey isn't over yet. You have to come along with me, you know, for that. And then later on, you know, you'll get that second piece of a clue. Maybe it's somebody else. And then we just build up to like, maybe the day that Bray Wyatt does come back for that, like then it'll be okay. And whatnot, you know, um, I, I always like stories where like they do lead me along, but again, I need that payoff. I need to be that invested. So like, if we do start off with like, you know, a woman being presented as the right white rabbit, why not follow her? Why not follow her journey and see what other clues like she'll give us, but they have to really plan this out <laughs> in order yeah, for it to work. Absolutely. I like that because it, it, if it does further it, I like it. If there's still mm -hmm. more to the journey, if you're just going to keep giving me QR codes with coordinates to the next raw, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so lame. I'm sorry, but QR code to the next location of raw. I don't give a shit. Like, give me something more. That's lazy. It's boring. That's lazy. It's it, like it's it, it's fun to do the research, but when you get it's the Ovaltine thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ovaltine That's exactly thing. what it is. The other thing I, I want to give them credit for, and I don't know the financials behind it, they have yet to use White Rabbit on television. So are they even paying you know any any rights towards it because it hasn't been on TV yet? Yeah, so they that's don't want to pay that. You know, they have all these people posting these videos on YouTube and on Instagram and on these on TikTok, but they have yet to pay Jefferson Airplane for any rights to it. So it's almost you want to talk about game changer. That's ECW level of scrimping to not pay for things so and, I give them credit look, uh, they're not even using the song they're using the isolated vocals from the song and what's what i mean i don't know the logistics of how to pay for something like that but i would assume it's different than having to pay for the full band song right you could just pay the artist for that or just her voice the stripped down one pretty much i mean yeah. i think that would be like the logical approach like to do that it's it's her vocals so yeah you know i, I would think so I hope so, they did. Uh, they yeah. were saying because people were like, oh, they wouldn't use it for anyone but Bray Wyatt. They ha it has to be someone huge. But I'm like, think they have yet to play it on TV. They can play whatever song they want in the arena in yeah. intermission. Mm -hmm. So they yep. have yet to even use it. If they use it on yeah. television, I'll be shocked. Uh, yeah, I'll be shocked. Or is this going to be like a vanilla ice under pressure thing where they change one <laughs> note? <laughs> and then they don't have to pay anything. Yeah. You know? Tony yeah. paying for the, you know, they're paying for Jane. So it's not like, you know, yeah. right in the same discography. So it's it's possible that. I don't know, man. It, it, I do like the story and I agree. Like, I, and the red hair and stuff with Malachi's theme or Alistair's old theme being hidden in a QR code, the lyrics there. That's when you know they're just messing with you at this point. They're just oh, trying yeah. to get people to, to react a certain Corbin, way. Corbin, Kentucky. Yeah. They, Corbin, Kentucky. So people are going to be like, is it Baron Corbin? Come on. If well, it's Baron, Baron Corbin's Corbin. last match, or oh, the Fiends, uh, Bray Wyatt's last match before he became the Fiend was with Baron Corbin. So that, you know, if even further. And again, sleuth is the word like these people are insane that they're actually digging deep and they found promos that you and I use on the, in the news. So that's the credit. fun part of it. That is the fun part of it for me is just going on the internet after all of this yeah. and just looking at all of the people who've dug into it. That's the yeah. most thing, but I'm, I'm hung up on the thing Marie said about bringing in a female because man, if 
that is the best case scenario if you do it right. If you do it right and it doesn't flop and mm-hmm. the big reveal isn't Bray, but it's still leading to Bray, if you do it the right way, that's great because yeah. everyone thinks they know it's Bray. Everyone's awaiting for Bray. But if yeah. you can swerve us and not give us Bray, but not... I just worry if it's not Bray, everyone's going to be like, oh. Yeah. Just yeah, give yeah, me Alexa yeah. in a schoolgirl outfit on a swing. It has to be something more meaningful than that and more mm-hmm. driven in story where it makes sense in this universe because that old fiend the and the Alexa with the doll that doesn't fit Triple H's vision about what's going on and what he wants to come to me, at least you know, from what I can see of what he's planning with Dexter Loomis's character has a little bit more of an edge to him than he did originally in the NXT universe. He feels a little bit more dangerous. I'm hoping yeah. that Bray can have creative control, but also be geared towards it. At the end of the day, it's an in-ring product. It can't be based in this swamp yard match with Braun Strowman where you're getting sucked uh, into yeah, the yeah. abyss. I do think that Triple H is one of those guys. He's not like Vince where he'll just let something die with loose ends though, where I think he is going to use Bray coming back if Bray is the white rabbit. He's going to use this as a way to tie up those loose ends with Alexa Bliss and 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 how he I don't think it's just going to be him coming back and everything else is kind of in the past and forgotten about. I think it's going to be a way to continue the story that was there with the fiend but make it make sense in his new direction of creative. I just hope that Alexa looks like Julie Hart. You know, I mean, I don't want it to be presented where she's wearing the bright colored schoolgirl outfit. To me, that all that stuff was the cringiest shit I've seen on Raw <laughs> in the longest time. It was horrible. Like, I'll just be honest. I hated you. that. I hated so, it. Yeah. And I love the fire, the the Firefly Funhouse. I thought that was a cool little optic, a side character. But when he came out and wrestled in the sweater, I wasn't here for that either. So there was a lot of nitpicking I could do. But listen, it's his vision. It's what he wants it to be. But Mm -hmm. I just want it to make sense sequentially in the way Triple H wants the book. I don't want it to be this like island of creativity where you turn the red light on in a hell in a cell and then that that match, he kicks out of a million curb stomps and that's it. Like I want it to make sense. Oh God, no. (laughs) So, because people forget, like we all talk about Bray Wyatt, like it's a great, like I love Bray. I think he's a talented dude, but there was a lot of shit with that Fiend character. And I think people forget how bad it truly was at one point. So everyone wants to like, oh, it's cool merch. It's a cool belt, all that shit. But Mm, was it really that cool or were we just kind of nostalgic for what it could have they been? dropped the ball on it they dropped the ball yeah on it. maybe that's blasphemous maybe people disagree with me but uh, they dropped there was the a ball. lot of bad in that for as good as it was there was a lot of really bad shit that's seth rollins hell in a cell match like that's why i'm worried about this it because it, it the build-up was awesome you know the fire mm-hmm. fluff on house when he was flashes of it before and the big reveal of him then then it became like okay at the end of the day you're just a guy in a mask wrestling in a ring with red lights yeah, you know, yeah. it, it lost something. You're like Glacier, dude. Like Glacier wrestling in the blue light. Like at the end of the day, what's the difference? Except that main event push. So Marie, are you in for it though? Are you, you know, we talked about is it you don't feel it's necessarily game changer for storytelling, but I haven't got a handle on are you are you enjoying the ride of it? Uh I'm enjoying the ride of it um from like a far standpoint because I'm not doing no detective work. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna use that age old phrase of I'm gonna let this play out. I'm just yep. gonna follow it along, see what happens. I'll let uh wrestling Twitter be be the detectives and I'll just read posts and be like, all right, cool, I'm up to date, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you one sound of, like me. <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> phrases to use is cautiously optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll stay cautiously optimistic about it's it. It's fun because it's fresh, and I, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 doing like you, Marie. I just go in and read the after effects of, <laughs> of all the the Sherlock Holmes of the internet. Oh, I love when something happens, and I go to Twitter, and there, I, I see the 200 comments. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. All right, let's get into let's it. Let's dive in. <laughs> yep. All right. Does anybody have any final thoughts before we wrap up for the evening? Brody Brody King for world champion 2023. Just put it in that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You were round robin? No round robin. Okay. Uh Marie, it's been great having you on. Can you let everybody know again where they can find you? Of course. Uh thanks for having me on. This was fantastic. Um, so again, I'm Marie Shadows. You can find me on Twitter at Marie underscore shadows. You can also find me on twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows. And if you want to know more about New Japan Pro Wrestling, make sure you sign up for free at my newsletter, Marie Shadows at Substack.com. Awesome. 
Well, it's been a blast having you on. Yeah, thank you so much, Marie. And course, we will you. see you guys down the road next week. That's going to wrap us up for this edition of the Turnbuckle Debate. Make sure you guys are following the TurnbuckleTavern.com for all of your tavern needs. Normally, we give Tom a couple of seconds to talk here. But Ace, I'm going to let you uh, get these last couple seconds in. Shot Nostalgia, stay on the ride with us. We're almost at the end, 1996. We have 30 episodes. We're about 25 in. So hop along the ride. We have season two coming up. ECW 1995. We've got a good good stretch of episodes to get into. And of course, AEW Rapper Show. Catch me on Wednesday nights reacting positively to AEW. <laughs> All right. Court is dismissed. Dismissed.